For today's EMN5, we're going to talk about femur fractures. These are usually from a high mechanism injury, a lot of times blunt trauma, for example, MVCs, although we can also see it even in a fall from standing, particularly in elderly patients. We can also see it in penetrating trauma, for example, gunshot wounds, and then just make sure if you are seeing it in a pediatric patient, especially if it's before they can walk, to think about non-accidental trauma. So on exam, you're going to see a fairly deformed leg. It's usually shortened. The thigh can be pretty tense and swollen from the hematoma. And overall, it's just going to be very unstable. Now, some complications we have to look out for is any nerve injury, vascular injury, and then hemorrhage into the space. Um, so for nerve injury, it's usually sciatic nerve, although it's very rare overall, about 2 to 9%, depending on the mechanism. As far as vascular injury, if it's arterial, you can think about looking for an expanding hematoma. Those can be pretty significant. Um, and make sure that you check pulses in the extremities. Another thing that we can do, especially for penetrating traumas, where you're going to have much more likely concurrent vascular injury, is to do ABIs. This is really important to document any signs of vascular injury and also to go on and decide if you need to do further imaging. So first off, for imaging, when a patient comes in, you're going to get an AP lateral x-ray if you have any concern. And from there, you can go on and talk to your trauma team, your orthopedics, your vascular surgeons, and decide based on the x-ray in your exam if you need to go on and get further imaging, for example, CAT scans or vascular studies. Just talk with them and see what would be most helpful because a lot of this will be preoperative. Now, as far as the treatment that we're going to give the patient in the ER and possibly even the pre-hospital setting, um, we need to put them in a traction splint. And the goal is to put about 10% of the patient's body weight on that leg and up to about 15 pounds or 7 kilograms. And the idea is that it stabilizes the fracture but also distracts it, which decreases that potential space that a hematoma can be forming. So remember, the average loss of blood in a femur fracture, a closed femur fracture, is 1 to 1.5 liters. So it's pretty significant, and that's just an average loss from any kind of fracture. So you can even think about putting a traction splint on in a pre-hospital setting, especially if the transit time is going to be prolonged. When can you not put one on? Well, think about if there's any other leg fracture or pelvic fracture, if you're suspicious for a nerve injury, or if it's an open or contaminated wound. And make sure anytime you put the splint on or move the patient around significantly to repeat a neurovascular exam. Now, sometimes you might not have a traction splint. So people have gotten creative in the past. That's how important this is. Here, this team used a monitor. You can also use normal saline bags. This is pretty easy, right? They're one kilogram. If you have a 50 kilo person, you hang five bags on them. And you can do that up to a max of seven bags. This is also a common topic in wilderness medicine, how to get creative when making splints. Here they're using a ski pole. You can even use a canoe paddle. And the whole idea is that not only is this helpful to stabilize the fracture, but it's actually comfortable for the patient as well. It decreases movement, especially if they're being transported anywhere, and also helps decrease the muscle spasm, uh, which can be pretty painful and intense in these fractures. And in the end, you're going to need ortho to see the patient and usually going to need operative repair. So three to remember for femur fractures. Make sure and put them in a traction splint at about 10% of their body weight or up to 15 pounds. Make sure and check for pulses and record ABIs to look for vascular injury. And obviously, make sure you think about the resuscitation overall. Go through your full ATLS protocol, do a full head-to-toe exam, and think about any blood loss that they might have had from that fracture. Here's some references, and thanks for joining us on EMN5.